how can we solve x prime equals ax if a is diagonalizable? In a linear algebra course, you may have learned how to do this. In this video, we will review the steps. These steps will give us an easy final expression for n independent solutions. We recommend to memorize this final expression. From now on, we will often use it without doing all the linear algebra steps in between anymore, because this allow will allow us to do our computations a bit more faster and more smoothly. So how do we do this? We have x prime equals a times x. A is diagonalizable, so a equals p times d times p inverse, where d is diagonal, lambda is on the diagonal, and p is a matrix with the eigenvectors, uh, where the eigenvectors are all independent. So how did we solve this problem, x prime equals a times x? So here we have x prime equals a times x. So first multiply with p inverse on the left, so p inverse here and here. So we get p inverse times x prime equals p inverse times p times d times p inverse times x. So p inverse times p equals the identity matrix. And then we use that p inverse times x prime that the p is just a constant, so we can take it out. So p inverse times x prime equals p inverse times x prime. So we use that to rewrite p inverse times x prime as the derivative of p inverse times x. So that's what we do over here. And we cancel out here the identity matrix. Identity matrix times diagonal matrix is just the diagonal matrix. And we are left with the p inverse times x over here. So p inverse x prime equals diagonal matrix times p inverse times x. Now we choose, we define we, y equals p inverse times x, because with this definition we find y prime equals d times y. So then we now have to solve the problem y prime equals d times y. That is fortunately easy. We know that y of t equals e to the power dt times y of 0. And because uh, e to the power dt is easy to compute. We can write down the solution immediately. We take, again, as often n equals 2 for convenience in order to not get big matrices. Then e to the power dt is just e to the power lambda 1t, e to the power lambda 2t. And for larger matrices, you just get a larger matrix, but it continues the same way. Then we know y of t equals e to the power dt times some initial condition, we can multiply this out, and there we have our y of t. And then we know x of t, because we know uh, y equals p inverse times x, so x equals p times y. And here we have our p, and here we have our y with components c1 e to the power lambda 1t, c2 e to the power lambda 2t. So if we compute this product, we get first factor times first scalar, plus second factor times second scalar, so there we have our general solution. So if we would have more, uh, then we would have uh, uh, not only c1 v1 e to the power lambda 1t and c2 v2 e to the power lambda 2t, but also c3 v3 e to the power lambda 3t, and so on and so forth. So in summary, uh, if you have our independent solutions x1, v, and x2, uh, which you can form using the eigenvectors and eigenvectors of your matrix. Uh, then we know that the general solution is a linear combination of this x1 and x2, and we can in fact check that these are independent by checking the Ronskin. The Ronskin is the determinant of x1, x2, and this uh, Ronskin equals the determinant of p times the determinant of e to the power dt. Well, the exponentials are non-zero, of course. P contains the eigenvectors, uh, so it's a uh, matrix with non-zero determinant. So that means that the Ronskin is also non-zero. Now finally, uh, this is this last step, so why, why is this? Why does this hold? So a little bit of algebra to show why this last step was in fact true. Uh, you, uh, you can rewrite P as uh, V1, V2, uh, the components uh, of V1 are V1x and V1y, Components of v2 are v2x and v2y over here. Then you can compute p times uh, this matrix over here. Here we have our p, here the other matrix. Compu compute all components. We see that you get this matrix over here. 
which is exactly the same as uh, e to the power lambda 1 t times v1 as first column and e to the power lambda 2 t times v2 as second column. So this is exactly the same as your Ronsky matrix. So the determinant of your Ronsky matrix, your Ronsky, equals the determinant of p times this uh, e to the power d matrix, so this determinant. So this is non-zero, so this means uh, that your solutions are independent and that means that your general solution will be a linear combination of x1 and x2.